Hey guys, what's up? This is Eric and Ryan from Tower Reviews, and today we're going to be doing a in-depth and complete review of the brand new iPhone 5. We have the white one here, but it's going to correspond spec-wise to the black one as well. We're going to show you the exterior specs, interior specs, talk about uh, our, impre our first impressions on the phone, as well as some of our personal opinions compared to other devices on the market, as well as the previous iPhones. Um, I'm going to be kind of taking the lead in this video just because I have been an iPhone user for a little over a year now and I've had three different versions of the iPhone ranging from the 4 to the 5. I was fortunate enough to uh, get in in time to get the first shipment of the iPhones and I was able to receive my iPhone on Friday, September 21st, which was the first day you could get the iPhone. Um, so I was lucky in that respect. But we're going to go over the exterior uh, features of the device right now. So head on, you can see the 4 inch brand new display. It is an IPS LCD with 326 pixels per inch. It has six over 16 million colors. Um, it's very, very vivid and bright. I never thought that it would be possible to have better display than the Retina display on the 4 and the 4S, but they really, Apple did really go all out and they added I don't know what they did about it, but it's a really crystal clear display, and obviously the bigger display is nice. On the front, the only thing that differentiates it from the other, the older two models is the camera that's, you can see, it's got a center, it's like in the middle, right above the earpiece, it's centered on the device, so when you're doing FaceTime, apparently they were having problems with like, when you looked at it, you were kind of looking off to the side, but this is supposedly going to fix that problem. To the left of the earpiece you can see the proximity sensor, which you can see on the white one and not on the black one, so that's kind of a preference thing. If you don't want to see it, then get the black one. On the bottom you have a home button, just like the other ones. I believe it's kind of a revised home button, this is my opinion, I don't know for sure, but it feels more responsive than my other home buttons that I've had, and it has more of a clicky noise to it, which is nice, it has some uh, tactile feedback. On the top, you can see the lock button and power button, obviously the same as the old one, but there is no headphone jack, it's missing because it moved to the bottom, um, which I, over a few days, about a week of use, have uh, really, really come to like, considering when you're listening to music, you can just put your phone in your pocket upside down, when you pull it out, it's right side up in your hands, ready for use. Um, they changed the way the grills look on the bottom. I think it looks a little cheaper than the previous. I like the mesh grill that was on the 4S and the 4, other than these kind of like toyish and little boyish holes. I think it looks a little better, but the lightning port on the bottom obviously is an upgrade. I love the way how you can put it in upside down and it's good. And I like the way that it's smaller and it just overall feels like a more solid way of transferring data and charging your device. On the left here, all you got is the SIM card. Um, which I don't even use because I have Verizon. And on the, I think I called that the left side, but that was the right side. And on the right side, we have the volume rocker and uh, the toggle between the vibrate and loud settings. They've made it smaller, thinner, because the device is thinner, obviously. But it's very, very tight. It makes a nice click. It's a real, real nice piece of hardware there. As long as the as well as the buttons, they have a nice click to them. On the back, it looks very similar to the old camera, but it's an eight megapixel camera. It's got a back illuminated sensor with autofocus, touch to focus, which they had before, digital image stabilization, stabilization, which is new to the five. Um, it has geotagging. It has face detection, which is also new, and it also supports the panorama. Um, which is, we'll throw a few pictures in. I took one at the Phillies game actually, not too long ago. Um, it's a beautiful picture. The front facing one has been uh, enhanced as well. It's a 720p 30 frames per second HD uh, FaceTime camera taking 1.2 megapixel stills. Super clear, I mean, I, I can't even tell you the difference between the grainy old one and this one, which is just crystal clear. Um, it makes a for a way better front-facing camera experience for from FaceTime to just taking photos of yourself or your friends. So the design is relatively the same, glass on the front and glass and aluminum on the back. It's 20% uh, lighter and it's only 3.95 ounces. It's 18% thinner. Obviously in these, what I'm saying like thinner, it means thinner than the 4S and lighter than the 4S. Um, 
it's just overall, it's an amazing, amazing device. You pick it up and it's a little light at first, which is kind of concerning. Um, you kind of think, oh wow, well, maybe it's not built as well, but as soon as you put it in your hand, you really feel the uh, craftsmanship. It's probably gonna be a little better for durability and for aesthetics, it's also better, I think, personally. Um, I also think the weight has made it more durable because when it's dropped, it's not like a brick hitting the ground, it's more like, you know, something lighter. So it just doesn't crack the screen as easy. Okay, so I'm gonna take uh, a little bit more time to talk about the display since it is such an upgrade and it's probably the biggest difference between the old iPhones and the new 5. I just wanted to reiterate the fact that it's a 4-inch display. It also has 40% higher color saturation than the previous displays and it is at the 16.9 aspect ratio. Um, it's better for HD playback, so when you turn it to the side you get no black bars and widescreen. So I don't know if that's gonna mean much for just the daily user. But if you're gonna watch an HD video, it's apparently gonna look a lot better and you're not gonna have to double click to zoom. We're gonna start to go into more of the software uh, and maybe the internal specs on the iPhone since we've talked about all the external uh, features that has changed between the 4S and the 5. Um, so when you look under the hood of the new phone, you can see that it is equipped with the brand new A6 processor from Apple which is claimed to have two times faster graphics as well as two times faster processes on the device. So from my point of view, it's been, it's blown that aspect or that perspective increased ratio out of the water. It's made it completely so much faster in every way, not just from like the daily processes but everything from the maps to opening different types of applications like iTunes, App Store, even third party applications. It's just made it so much faster in every way. So that's really good. It's equipped with one gig of RAM which is not good in this market um, compared to like the Galaxy S3 or any other Android device but obviously most of you guys know that it's not always specs that matter. It's the overall package and the OS. iOS is such a light running system that it doesn't really need the extra power. I just wanted to make a quick note that most of the apps are not optimized for the new display yet so you're going to want to be ready for the fact that when you open a regular app it's gonna have a black bar on the top and the bottom. Um, I mean obviously I'm gonna use Pandora just because a lot of people use Pandora. There is a black bar on the top and the bottom of the display um, above and below the actual app uh, content and even like the Verizon LTE the time and the battery percentage is moved down just to make sure that it's not a distorted view of the app so I mean obviously they'll fix that fast but at this point it's kind of annoying also we need to definitely address the fact that it is finally 4G not that HSPA plus uh, fake 4G that AT&T added to their iPhone. I know my girlfriend's iPhone 4S says 4G next to AT&T, but it really doesn't do anything more than 3G. This is real LTE and it is real fast. It's lightning. It is literally the fastest phone I've ever used on the internet. I went from using 3G on my device from the iPhone 4 to the 4S, and I saw a little bit of difference from the 4S, from the 4 to the 4S, but the 4G just blows the 3G out of the water. It's faster than even any any other Wi-Fi network I've used, which is really amazing. So that's probably the biggest selling point for me on the iPhone 5. That's the biggest difference. Also, after a week of using the phone for the calling aspect, um, which I mean not a lot of people care about just because it's like a feature phone, it's just absolutely a great, great experience. You have clear car call quality. The only thing that I have a little problem with is that it's not very loud. So if you're in a kind of a loud situation, you're gonna to wanna to plug in your headphones. Oh, look, we're getting a call from Ryan McLaren right now. What a surprise. All right, so let's say you're getting a call and you don't wanna use, you don't wanna answer it, you're in a meeting, you're in school or something. You can just slide up. It's almost like accessing the camera and you can just say, remind me later or reply with a message. So I'm gonna hit reply with a message. Um, so I declined the call to Ryan, but instead of him being mad at me and saying, Eric, why don't you answer my call and then getting mad at me, you can basically just do a quick text reminder or like kind of like a, a little thing that tells him why you didn't answer. So I can just be like, I'll call you later. 
Okay, so that'll send a text to Ryan. So your maps application, finally, you got turn by turn navigation, you got this cool 3G or this cool 3D kind of scrolling thing that you got. You can do city view, I think it's called. Uh, you turn it to satellite and then hit 3D in a populated area uh, where they take lots of satellite photos. Um, you can see here I got Philadelphia. You can search all through Philadelphia. Um, as you can see, uh, it's rendering. This is probably the the most difficult thing to render on 4G, just because it's like um, the 3D and everything. And it is, I'm swiping as fast as I can almost, and it's rendering really quickly. So if we take it off the 3D model and we zoom out a little bit, let's see here. I mean, obviously there's a little blocking. It's rendering extremely fast, like. I don't understand how they get this to render so fast. I guess it's a combination between the new processor and the 4G. So, I mean, I don't even have full 4G right now. I have about half. We're going to go into the music application. I don't have any music on my phone yet because it's new. So, obviously, um, I'm not going to be able to show you the full difference between it, but I'm just going to grab Ryan's iPod 4 to show you the difference between the music app. They basically changed aesthet the aesthetics of it, and that's about it. So, it's a little different. You got kind of a different futuristic looking slider and um, toggle buttons and then just kind of like a different color scheme is really all that it is. Passbook we got now so I mean that's a great a great no it's really not um, right now it's not really viable to use that much but I guess it'll become more popular um, I'm not even gonna talk about it because I don't know that much about it I never plan to use it I'm never getting on an airplane by myself without my parents so I don't need it at all. We're gonna talk about uh, another thing that iOS 6 has allowed the iPhone 5 to do, and that is FaceTime over 4G, which you can also do on the uh, other devices, um, but obviously 4G is going to be a great way to uh, to speed up that process, and as you can see, Ryan just went into the App Store, and they upgraded the App Store and the iTunes Store. I mean, I'm not going to, I'll show them to you real quick. I mean, look, wow. It's the same apps in a different format. That's all they did. Uh, it's nothing that's really going to make the the surfing experience more better or better than it was the camera they really did update that a little bit it kind of changed the way it looks when like the shutter button and all that jazz when you go into the uh, video portion of the application it makes it translucent right next to the camera uh, shutter button so you have the full screen effect um, which is pretty nice you can we'll just do a quick little video you can snap pictures while you're taking video so boom, boom. So you see something you want to take a picture of while you're taking a video, no problem at all. You have one more option that uh, becomes available with iOS 6, um, and it's panorama mode, um, which is really cool. You take like a sweeping picture of landscape. Shutter speed has increased a lot. Um, so <laughs> look at that. Like the speaker can almost not handle the sound as fast as I'm um, taking pictures. Apparently, the iPhone 5 has a better speaker. I don't think Apple came out and said, hey, the iPhone 5 has a better speaker than the 4S, but I think uh, the common consensus on people who got the iPhone 5 say that it's a little bit louder, a little bit clearer. Um, I haven't really noticed the difference, but we're going to go with it has a better speaker. seems to just have a better form factor for durability. Um, the 4S and the 4, as you know, it hits the ground once, boom, you got the back front shattered, you got a crying customer, you got a broken iPhone, you got unhappy situation. With the 5, if you drop it, I feel like you may get some scuffs on the aluminum on the side, but I think it has a better chance of uh, keeping the LCD, uh, the glass over the LCD intact, as well as the back, which is kind of broken up, so it's not one giant piece of one material, so it's not going to shatter, and obviously aluminum can shatter. So that might dent, which is something that no one has really seen happen yet, but it, I mean, obviously... That could happen. Also in Safari with iOS 6, you can see how you get the full screen. You can get rid of the the like the search bar and the navigational buttons on the bottom and get a full screen browsing effect in landscape, which is pretty nice. I mean, with the 4-inch display, you got some nice scrolling abilities and you can just see a lot more content without being obstructed by those uh, bars on the top and bottom. Other than that, Safari has remained pretty much the same. Talk about battery life real quick. Do get through some of the boring stuff. This is straight from Apple. We got 8 hours of talk time, 8 hours of internet browsing, 10 hours of video playback, 40 hours of audio playback, 225 hours of standby time. From my very short exposure to the phone, uh, I see that the battery life has not increased from the 4S. They're lying. Yeah, I didn't think it would from the 4G. Obviously, 4G is going to 
make it harder on the battery in every situation, but it has held up pretty well, okay? I can say it's about the same as the 4S, but I'm not gonna come out and say that it's better because that's gonna be a lie. With the bigger screen and the 4G, there's no apps, there's there's no way they're gonna, and a thinner form factor, which means probably a smaller battery, it's just not gonna happen. Um, but they have to say it because that makes it look better, but it, no. iOS 6 also gave a little more capabilities to uh, your faithful assistant Siri, which is still completely stupid. Um, it really doesn't help you with anything. The only thing that I actually use Siri for is um, doing my laundry. I mean, um, setting my alarm in the morning. I just like to tell it, like, I want to wake up at like 8 o'clock and then I never forget to set an alarm. But you can do a few more things with it. You can like ask about sports scores and you can have it open and close applications, which is completely useless. But as you can see, all jokes aside, um, it has given you a lot more options with Siri. I mean, it's, as, a, as I said, it's still really not something that you'll use in every day, but if you just want to be like, hey, like, look, my phone can do this for me, it's clearly going to be a pretty cool uh, thing to show your friends. Right, so here's a question. Should you upgrade to the iPhone 5? My answer, I mean, I don't know who wants to listen to me, but I'm pretty educated in the iPhone, and my answer is yes, as long as you're coming from anything under the 4S. If you have the 3GS, the 4, if you somehow still have the 3G, get your hands on a 5 immediately. If you have an upgrade, it's definitely worth the $200. It's a great, great upgrade from the 4S. There's a lot of key features that uh, make it worth it over the 4S. But if you have a 4S, it's still going to do for a little bit longer. I came from a 4S and it's still w pretty wicked fast and uh, it gets everything done. And also it's a very, very nice phone still. As for the color, I mean... I'm kind of against everyone else, but I like the white. I've been a black iPhone owner for over a year. The white iPhone 5 is absolutely stunning. You bring it out of the box, you're not going to regret getting the white one. The contrast between the white and the aluminum is absolutely beautiful. Um, the only thing I don't like about the black one is it's all black. There's no contrast. It's a little boring in my opinion, but obviously both very sexy devices uh, in their own way. iPhone 5, major success. Have a nice day.